Welcome to LabMist.com in our lab video series in Cisco ACS. You can find complete lists of ACS video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we will perform a Cisco ACS configuration backup and restore in a distributed environment. Here's our lab setup. So we have our primary ACS server running in version 5.4, the IPF.100, and we have a secondary ACS at the IPF.101, and we have already built the distributed environment from our previous lab. We also have here a domain control at the IPF.40, and all these servers are sitting on the same VLAN. So what we're going to do in this lab is to take a backup of our current state of the configuration and then assume that the ACS on uh, the primary ACS has failed and then we're trying to bring it back up using a restore. So the first thing we need to do is to create a repository where you want the backup files to be stored. So here under the system administration, let me make sure we're on the right nodes. So on the primary system administration and operation software repositories, if you're trying to create it, you have a different options as far as the of the protocol you want to use. You can do local disk, FTP, SFTP, TFTP, or NFS. For us, let's assume that we want to use FTP and we have a FileZilla FTP server running on this machine. And you want to make sure that the user that you have configured on your FTP server has appropriate privilege to access whatever directory that you want to store the file. So here we have created a directory called ACS Backup on a desktop. And you want to make sure the user, which is in our case is Cisco, has the read, write, and append privilege to that directory. Okay, now we can go ahead and give it a name. We're going to call it backup-ftp, and we're going to choose protocol of FTP, and the server name is 1.16.16.32.40, which is our domain control slash FTP server here. The path, that particular user has a root of the ACS backup, so we can just do slash, and then username we have a user created on our FTP server, Cisco with the password Cisco. And then we can submit. And before we kick off the actual backup process, we want to make sure that the ACS now can successfully access our repository. And the way to do that is to lock into the command line. So admin, password, and then you can do show repository and then the name, which is backup FTP. Now you can see in the background there are some activities and it came back there is currently a single file in that directory. This is our patch file that we will use in our next lab when we look at the patch install. But we can confirm that the ACS has access to that particular directory. Now what we can do is to start a on-demand backup, although you can also do a scheduled backup just to make a note here. You can give it the file prefix, point it to the repository that you created and then you can set up your backup schedule. But for us, we're not gonna do that. Instead, we're gonna do on-demand backup and you can initiate an on-demand backup, whether it's from the primary and the secondary backup from this page under operations and distributed system management. We're gonna do a config backup from our primary here. So we're gonna select our Allium ACS PRI and then click backup. And then you have a choice to enter the prefix. We're gonna use manual for that and repository is backup FTP. Let me clear their screen in the back so if there's an activity we can immediately spot it. You can either do ACS config backup or back, uh, config backup with the OS. Here we're just going to do the config backup and then we hit submit and you can see immediately in the background here it performed the backup and if you check our ACS backup folder here we have our backup file that is prefixed with manual it's about 11 meg, and that confirms a successful backup. So the next thing we're going to do is to make some changes to our config. And what we're going to do is to delete our switch to here that we added from our previous lab. And it's a bogus device. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. That's just to make some changes to our config. While in fact, this could be a total failure to our ACS primary or secondary servers. So at this point, we're just going to assume that our primary server has failed. And if it's a VM, then you would have built the VM from scratch and then go through a setup. As well as if it's the appliance version, then you would RMA the appliance and then also go through a setup. And the first thing you would do after you've gone through a setup and make sure all the IP address, hostname, and DNS and all that are configured is to create the exact same repository that points to the same file storage. And then at this point, what we can do is to restore 
our primary box. So the first thing we want to do is to isolate our secondaries since the two box will still be in communication. But if you were in the actual failure, then you would have built your primary or your fail servers offline that's isolated anyway. So, but here it's just to simulate that we're going to disconnect our secondary server or remove from the network by disconnect this uh, VM network adapter. Okay, so at this point, we just cut off the communication between the primary and the secondary. So right now we can go ahead and restore the configuration of the primary. So to restore the from the backup file, we're going to do that from the command line. And to make sure that the again ACS still have access to the repository and have visibility to the backup file that we did, just do short repository and then the name of the repository. And then we're going to execute command ACS restore followed by the name of the backup file and then the name of the repository where the file is stored. That is backup-ftp and again before I hit enter let me clear uh, FTP console and then enter and it's, it's just a little message that said it's going to require an ACS service to restart. Do you want to continue? You type in yes and then it's going to initiate the restore process. We're just going to have to sit there and wait for that to complete. And now it's uh, warning you about potential effect on a distributed setup. Do you want to accept or continue? We do yes. And now the restore process continue. Since this might take a couple minutes, I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back when it's completed. So now it looks like all of our services are back up. So let's lock back into our primary ACS. So ACS admin. And now let's confirm that our switch two that we deleted before we did the restore came back. So right here. We got our switch two back. That means our configuration has been successfully restored. So the next thing we want to do is to bring back our secondary ACS onto the network. So on the net network adapter, make it connected. And let's go under the network devices. So you can see the secondary ACS still does not have the switch two under the configuration. So now since we have restore our primary, we want our secondary to have the exact same copy of the config of our primary by connecting it back, register it again to the primary. So to do that, we first need to deregister. And this is can be done from the primary itself. So under system administration and then distributed system management. Let's go ahead and deregister that. Now we give it a second, it should become deregister. There you go. So now we need to register the secondary ACS back to the primary. So you go under the system administration and then deployment operation. And this is exactly what we did before when we first joined the secondary to the primary. So the IP of the primary is 32.100, then ACS admin, and then your password. And then make sure we checked on the hardware replacement. And the current instance of our secondary is LM ACS SEC. And then we can click on register to primary. Then we jump back to the primary and then hit the refresh. You can see now the status of our secondary instance has turned green and the replication status is, uh, is currently pending. And so now the secondary has to go through a service restart. So I have to give it a couple more minutes here. And we can SSH to the secondary server, lock in and check the service status. And you can see it's still initializing. So once the services are back up and running, we can always go back to primary ACS and check on the replication status. And here you can see the replication status is now updated. So we can lock back into our secondary ACS to make sure all of our configuration changes that was complete during the config restore is now being replicated to our secondary. And sure enough, you can see here now the secondary contains the configuration for switch two. So that wraps up our video on ACS 5.4 Backup and Restore. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmins.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.